Hey guys, welcome to part three. Hopefully I fixed the audio problem. That really bothered me last video. Um, it really, it really uh, bothered me that the audio was all messed up. But anyway, there's another no edit video in real time building a firefighter radio strap. This is part three. And I think this video, I'm going to bevel and burnish a lot of the pieces. I'm gonna have to cut the angle. Sorry about that. I'm gonna have to cut the, uh, the video just to change angles. I might have to do that or just bring the camera with me. So we'll see how that goes. But the pieces are over here. <clears throat> right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bevel and burnish all of these. If you guys don't mind, it'll probably behoove you to watch part two and three. I meant to say part one and two is what I meant to say. So let's go ahead and watch part, what do I mean let's go ahead? Part one and part two. Wow, what's wrong with me? Um, let me change the camera angle here so I can show you what I'm talking about. All right, I love it how it doesn't want to focus. All right, so before I do anything here, what I want to do is go ahead and assemble this holster and a lot of this holster uh, is basically put together ready with the exception of this piece here that I have to glue. So I'm gonna glue this first before I do anything else. This way, as this is settling, I could work on beveling and burnishing everything else. I also had another question as far as how do I finish my stitch like I did in part two. And the same thing like I do with hand stitching, I go ahead and just burn that off a little bit. Wow, I have to I have the windows open in my house because it's really nice outside and it's, it's, all the doors are slamming and opening. So let me go take care of that real quick. Hold on. You see? That is unacceptable. That's bad. It's bothering me as well. Hold on. I'm almost there. Oh, what a nightmare. All right. Sorry about that, y'all. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and let me make sure my mic is still working. Oh, that bothered me, yo. Big time. All right, let me glue this piece here. Oh. Wow. That is on there. We're gonna have to get creative here. There's another reason why I like uh, these knives because I don't mind sticking this cheap 17 cent blade in here. I'd feel funny about doing this with a expensive trim knife. Oof, that is on there. Wow. Well, I know that creates a seal, and that's good. Let's put that back. I'm gonna go ahead and discard this knife. This blade, 17 cents is gone. I think it's 17 cents. But uh, yeah, let me go ahead and glue this. I have to mark. Before I glue this down, I'm gonna go ahead and bevel. I'll burnish this little piece here because I'm not gonna be able to get to it. I'm not gonna be able to get to it later on. I'm not gonna show you this. I'm not gonna show you this right now because it don't take too long. Plus, you're gonna see a lot of burnishing in this video anyway. I see it. And I just mark that line and that tells me what I have to glue. All right. Let me show you a little trick that I do here. I use the edge of the table because I 
and all I'm using is weld wood contact cement you get at Lowe's or Home Depot or something like that. I get a gallon of it. And I just replace, I replenish this uh, glue pot when it runs dry. You can get the barge cement, which is absolutely amazing, but it's like three times the cost. I normally don't go from this angle, that's why it's a little awkward for me. But I want you to see it. I usually do this. It's a little easier for me. But you can't see it. So I'm just gonna have to suffer for you. See, it's just throwing me off doing it backwards like this. The things I do for you guys. All right. That's it for gluing for today. Alrighty. Take off any little glue that's here. I did make a video. I'm gonna let that set for a second. I did make a video. Whoa. Wow. Hey. I did make a video today with my boys um, and they put together a, a radio strap kit and I'm editing it now, but it was super fun with them in here. I don't know why I told you that. I'm trying to fill in time by watching glue dry, basically. But, uh, yeah. That's that. <laughs> exactly. What I, that's what I was saying. Oh, yeah? Tell me more about that. Really? Wow, that's nice. All right, let's look at this now. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this fan on, dude, because it is getting hot in here. Stand by. Let me do that, actually. Now that my lapel mic works. Oh, much better. So we're gonna attach this, and once it's uh, off to the side, then we can start beveling and burnishing. But I guess I'll talk to you about the tools I use while this is drying a little bit. I always use the number one edge beveler from Weaver Leather. The number one, that's what I use. And I use a regular burnishing tool. Super, what well, you can find everywhere. Sometimes I use this guy, a stick, and some sandpaper, there's like 800 grit sandpaper and I think there's 250 grit sandpaper as well as some water this is just a jar of water and glycerin saddle soap so I put water on it and then a little bit of glycerin saddle soap on the edge and I burnish this is how that glycerin saddle soap looks like you get it on Amazon it comes in a bar that I cut up. I cut the bar up. This will last forever. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. All right, let me go ahead and attach this now. That is it. So she's glued up. I'm gonna set her off to the side. And what we're gonna do now 
is this big long piece. I'm gonna do that later. So I'm gonna get this out the way. So all of this, we're gonna bevel, okay? We're gonna bevel all of this. And we can do that right here, right now. Now the problem, not, not the problem. Uh, the issue is, oh, not even an issue, <laughs> sorry. Let me uh, gather my thoughts. Okay, so all these are clicked out, right? With my, my uh, clicker and the dies. And they tend to leave a nice radius on the top part of them. So I don't know if you can see that. There's already a nice little radius, so I don't bevel the top. The bottom I do, but not the top. I don't know if you can see that. So, yeah. I don't bevel the top, only the bottom. Some I do, like this one, I, I do both but not the, the other pieces. Also, I don't do around the corners, only in the main strap. I'll show you what I do when I get to beveling. So that one's done. This one, we're gonna do the bottom. It's just a look that I prefer. This is an anti-sway strap right here, this piece. And we have to skive it down a little bit because it's gonna fold on itself. I don't want it too bulky around the trigger snap. And we're gonna use my burnisher for this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for this guy. We'll go ahead and just bevel everything. Now I'm gonna go and bevel the top and the bottom. I don't do around the the round end. I do the around the round end on the bottom. I do around the round end on the bottom. That even makes sense. So for example, down here, I'll go ahead and I'll go around the bottom here, around the end for that one, as well as this one. And then along the whole run. So now everything is beveled, basically. except that holster itself because it's still, it's still uh, glued up. But I can do this part right here. I'll do around this part where it's glued. I'll do that later. So we'll leave that out. All right, I'm gonna take you to my Skyra over here. Let me take you to my Skyver. You're coming along with me on a journey, my friends. Right here. Right? Hold on, sorry. Yeah, that's better. Okay. <clears throat> Now this piece right here, this is a piece, this is an anti-sway strap. It doesn't want to focus, is that what's going on? This is an anti-sway strap. See how thick it is right here? That's where the, it's going to go around the buckle. Um, and I don't want it too bulky, so I'm going to thin it down right from that hole out. Okay. And it's at nine ounce now, but I'm going to thin it down to about seven. And that little bit is gonna help when you have to put the buckle on. 
see. Oh man. What's the deal with this focus job? Okay, so it doesn't want to focus. It's no big deal. There we go. See, I skived it down just a little bit. And now we're gonna go to the skiver. Not the skiver. We're gonna go to that guy right there. We're gonna go to that guy right there. All right. I'm gonna do one piece here in the open so you can see how I do it. But I've done this a million times, but I'm gonna take my water, right? I'm gonna hit this with water around all the edges. Take my glycerin saddle soap. It just does not want to focus, does it? My glycerin saddle soap. And I'm going to run it across just a little bit. Wow. It's just anti-focus today, huh? And I'm going to hit it just a couple of swipes. Right? And then we're going to burnish it. Nice and done. I'm gonna do that again uh, out of focus, uh, out of screen with the other little guys because I think I don't need to show you that process again. The actual main strap, the big strap, I'll run it through that uh, burnisher, but then I'll finish it by hand. So now I'm just doing all these small pieces And this, is, this makes life a lot easier, a lot faster. So I'm just gonna leave it on. And right now, you can't see me, but I put the water and the glycerin saddle soap on the edges on my next piece. And we just get after it, you know? Maybe I'll change the camera angle and I'll put it up here looking down so you can see how I do it. Because I wanna show you how I how I use the different grooves. All right, let me do that for you guys. Let me do that for you guys. I'll stand by. I think my battery's about to die. Well, can you see, this is, is this professional videography? Is it though? All right, so what I wanna show you is how I actually use these. All right. What I wanna show you is how I use these different grooves here. Um, let me put some water and some glycerin saddle soap. I go with a tight groove first, and that makes it a little round. It gives it that rounded contour. And then I go on a larger gap to hit the flat side of the leather. Let me show you what I'm talking about. See, I'm gonna go here first. And then now I'm going to hit on this larger groove to get the flat side of the leather. See? All right. And I have two more little guys here. And this is the cord keepers. And this is hard, this is a, this can get your knuckles, so you gotta be careful. The way I do these are a little bit different. Sometimes I come across the top like this because it's easier and you don't, want, you don't rub your finger on that.
So all I have is that actual radio holster itself to do on these and then the actual main strap. All right, I got one more of these. I didn't use the sandpaper on this because I reserved that for the actual main strap that has the backing leather on there. <clears throat> and that's basically just to make it a little bit even if I didn't trim it exactly perfect. And also helps get some of that glue off the edge. But you can also use this sandpaper over here on this uh, burnisher, which I do sometimes. So, yep, there's that. Let me change this camera angle a little bit more so you could see how I'm gonna navigate. Yeah, let's do this. All right, so what I was talking about is you can use this sandpaper for the main, big, uh, for the main strap, but I'm gonna use that for the holster, all right? Because when I glued it, there was still some glue left over there. I don't know if you could see that. And also this is not exactly perfect. So I'm gonna square this off a little bit uh, on the single paper. And you can do this by hand. And not a lot, a little bit goes a long way, you know? You don't wanna really eat too much. And then it looks wonky. To me, that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bevel. Th this piece we already did down here. So I'm gonna bevel this real quick, wet everything, and then we're gonna burnish this right here with you. So you guys seen how I bevel, but this, this ain't rocket science right here. And it doesn't take off much. I'm still using the number one. It's just to knock off that hard edge a little bit. To be honest, I like a little more square look, but not super square. So now I'm gonna to put tons of water on everything. I'm gonna do this all at once. I'm just putting water on all the edges. And I'm gonna put a generous amount of saddle soap, maybe five passes on each side. I want this nice and slick. And we're gonna burnish this piece. That glue, how long has that been glue setting for? Not long. Now this one, I use this big guy here. That glue has been sitting for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And I can, I can already start messing, manipulating it. It's not completely cured yet, but it ain't going anywhere, you know what I mean? Now this piece here, I can, can come down here. And that cleaned it up pretty good. Nice and shiny, nice and smooth. Oh, I forgot two more pieces. Two smaller pieces here I gotta do real quick. And I remember that uh, he wanted MCFR on the actual holster somewhere. So I gotta, I gotta stamp that real quick somewhere. Before I forget, I just have to confirm on my phone. I got these two little pieces I forgot to do. But having a tool like this really saves you time. I mean, I did all this in 10 minutes, I think. It just really does, man. You gotta evaluate if it's worth it for you to have one of these in your shop. Um, if, you, if you make enough uh, leather to support it, you know? All right.
We're coming up on 30 minutes on this video. I might call it. Uh, yeah, I might call this video, guys. We're coming up on 30 minutes. I don't want it to be longer than that, but yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and call it this video. Um, but I basically beveled and burnished everything with the exception of, hold on, let me do this. We'll make this the outro. Yeah, right here. Why not? All right. Wow. It's terrible. This no edit thing is for the birds. All right. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, so we basically beveled and burnished all these smaller pieces. I still have to put um, so the, finish, the finishing, uh, some finisher on the edges. And that primarily is acrylic resiline that I, I put on the edges. Um, and that actually secures it. It makes it a little watertight on the edges. It doesn't give it that much of a shine, but it really protects us. It's more of a functional use than anything else. Since I'm not using beeswax, traditionally you'd put beeswax on the edges and burnish that into the leather. But I've been using acrylic resiline, which is like a plastic, basically. It's a liquid and it turns to a, a plastic film on the edges. That really protects the edges. It lasts longer, in my opinion, than the beeswax. But yeah, that's all we have to do with that. We also have to burnish this and put the, the edge coat on that. And I think I have to stamp one thing Oh, what I, I left it. Where'd I put it? Oh, I forgot to <laughs> burnish this guy. So I have to do that off camera. I'll do that off camera. But yeah, the next video is gonna be beveling and burnish, well, we already beveled this one, but burnishing this one and putting the edge coat on everything and maybe starting to assemble some, some pieces. So worst case scenario, two more videos. Best case scenario, one more video later. Uh, one, the next video will be the last one. Maybe, maybe not. This is long-winded. I'll see you guys later. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Bye.